What up gamers, it's your boy, Mark here. I've run out of content, so we're doing the top 10 commands of all time. You're not gonna believe number three, probably. Right, grep, number one, it's grep. You find things. Finding things is really useful because if you've lost them, you can find them. Um, find text, find files if you combine it with other commands and piping. If you don't know what grep is, you should. Um, shall I explain how it works? Sure, let's do a small demonstration. Wow, you can't Google this, so I'm gonna show you. Right, um, how do I do this here? Properties, check this out for production value, okay? I've just frozen my webcam. I've turned it off, bollocks. Aha, uh -huh, there we go, right. How do I move myself? Wow, look at that, okay. Right, nerds, there's nothing in this folder. I'm gonna make a file. I've just downloaded the complete works of Shakespeare. So let's use grab to show why it's useful. All right. So, we want to find every instance of Romeo in Shakespeare's complete works, which are there. That's only page 100. Is it? No, it's probably the complete works. Grab Romeo. The complete works of Shakespeare. There's no instances. Is that because I've spelt it wrong? Aha! Capitalization. So, there's one thing with grab. It doesn't instantly do capitals, but you can tell grab to be case insensitive. I think, dash I. There you go, so now it, exhorts, it ignores case. But look at this, there's other instances. I only want Romeos, so we can go dash O for only. Wow, it's grep. And then we can uh, pipe that into word count to see how many, there's 317 instances of Romeo in all of Shakespeare's work. I imagine they're all in Romeo and Juliet, um, probably. Wow, that's grep, it's so cool. It does so much more than that, but but that's not what this video is about. It's not a grep video, it's a top 10 commands video. What is next on Mark's list of menagerie? Find, we've got find. Find, man find, search for files. Whoa, you can search for files? Yes, you can, but why would you want to use find and not some more modern command? Well, find, ladies and gentlemen, is text based on the command line. Does that make any sense? Basically just means that it interacts with your files better and you can chain it with different things. You can also, with find, exec things afterwards. So you can find a whole bunch of files and then exec remove on them. So if I had like a, let's go touch, touch files, PDF files, um, touch file one to 100 dot text, that makes 100 files. No, it doesn't, what? Do I not know how to Linux? One, there we go, I remembered. Um, so now if I want to find all the files, find file.txt, right? That wouldn't find any because there's no files, but then I can go find file, um, file star like this, or file question and question.txt, which replaces these question marks now can be anything. So this has found every file except probably the first 10 if or nine. You see all that's done there? Very cool. And then, I don't like those files because I don't like things greater than 11 in some aspects of my life. So, exact rm, so we're going to exact the remove command and we're going to forcefully remove. This is where the file goes, the output of find. They need to put this in for magic. Boom. What has that done? ls, it's removed all the files. Very cool. That's find. You can also do recursive search. I use this alias a lot. Alias and find. Uh, is it an alias? And find. Which and find there you go so this is find dash i name like grep um it's a function not an alias so i name case insensitive and it just searches everything um in my directory for that so if i do m find and then ile it'll search find all those files there it's useful because this is a sane default i think anyway next up we got vim you know what Vim is. I'm not going to explain it anymore. Go to text editor. That was the one you wouldn't believe. Now, a more interesting one. SS. SS stands for socket something. Socket statistics. There you go. Wonderful. SS shows your sockets, and to use it, you want to do this. T-U-L-P-N. To put in your... I'll just... Uh, bloody... You won't see where I'm connected to or what I'm using them for, but... Ah, this is probably fine. Look, you can see I've got Discord open here. Um, and you can see what process numbers they're using. It's very useful for debugging. If you think you've got a virus, you can see if there's any unknown connections. So if a PID was there that I didn't understand, like I've got Shuttle there, which is a VPN, 
uh, which I've talked about before. Very cool, very POG software. Python is using networking connections, not sure why. Oh, it's running locally. That's because that's a local Django thing. So I can show you that line, look. So uh, this is um, my local address listing on port 8000. It's open to any network and it's running Python. Uh, that's actually a Django thing. There we go. That's very cool, and you probably don't know that one, unless I've made a video on it before. That's stats you might have used, but this is the one you're supposed to use. Cat is the next one, because it's cool and it opens files, and people say you shouldn't use cat if you're also grepping, but use cat anyway, because it's fun, and remove it in scripts. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Unnecessary use of cat is like irrelevant. Who really cares, right? Um, that's on there. It opens files, you know what cat does, but I use it all the time, so that's why it's on my most useful commands. Here's the, here's the, uh, controversial one. Uh, it's the system D based commands like system CTL and journal CTL. I actually think they're quite useful. They can start and stop things. They can restart things. System D unit files, once you get used to them, are kind of simple. So for example, if I want to start my web server and go system CTL start my web server, HTTPD, which is Apache sudo. Wow, it just started and I can check the status of it. Like so, boom, magic. This is the log here. Uh, you can see with it, it's running. It's disabled, which means it won't start on boot. If I want to enable it, I can just enable it. Magic, now it starts on boot. And how do I turn it off? I do stop. Whoa, and then if we check the status again, what's this? It's enabled now, whereas before it was disabled. Huh. But it's not started, so we can disable it. Disable, yeah, sorry, I'm not French. Disable, there we go and then status, wow. And then, trick here, system CTL, enable, dash dash now. Starts it now, <clears throat> and then we check the status. Whoa, now it's enabled and started, holy buckets. Now if I wanna see more information on the logs here, journal, journal, CTL. The only issue is that they're quite verbose. And I, boom, suddenly I a ton of logs that I can scroll up in my pager. Very cool. There we go. Wow, magic. Next, next command. It, it's crun because system D is useless and terrible and bloated and Leonard Pottering should probably be in prison for his crimes. Um, system D has these things called system D timers and they're terrible because they are complicated. And like, like everything in system D. Uh, like, have you seen how they start and stop programs? Like, why is it so complicated? Just use bash scripts, bro. What's the issue with using bash scripts you didn't need to reinvent the bloody wheel anyway they're not good cron is good watch my video on cron if you haven't it's command scheduler very complicated but in a kind of soulful way unlike uh mr pottering's implementation of system d timers there you go that's how it works boom there's just a page that tells you how it works not even the man file bro how cool is that magic anyway we've got a jacked now now a jacked that sometimes a jack comes in really useful, right? You're connected to an old server in a server room on the other side of the world. And there's an engineer on site. And he's like, bro, which server do you want me to go and look at? I don't know. And you're like, it's this one. But you can't describe it to him because they all look the same. So you type eject. And boom, the server's disk drive pops out. It goes, ping, ping. It goes like, that's all it does. It's fun to use. You can scare people with it. Uh, I just think it's cool that I can physically affect something but like 10,000 miles away. Anyway, next thing is mount because file systems are cool and connecting file systems, especially over a complicated network of VPNs is very cool. If I can mount some files onto my PC from Australia, to me, that's cool. Other side of the country, it's very slow, but it's cool. And you use them more than you think. They're easier than you think. I use them all the time. They're brilliant. Mounting file systems is cool. There's mount. Uh, and speaking of commands that I don't have in my list, ma uh, man, which is what we're using to open this. Man, man. You should all read man, man. There you go. It is, uh, it's a way to, to get help on your system. Very cool. Uh, if you want a little side project to do, read the this, man bash. This is actually a good, good bit of reading. Man bash. Maybe we'll read this together in a live stream one time if anyone will be interested in that. There's some content there. Oh, oh wow. That's not reading a blog post. What? Linux content that's not lazy? <laughs> uh, I guess it's just reading a man page. So, I do. Mm, maybe reveal my power level a bit there. Um, anyway, my all time favorite command it's SSH. I think you probably knew that, but only because of how versatile it is. If, if you could just connect to things, I, I don't care. Like, that's cool. 
and I'd use it every day and it'd still be up there. But the fact that you can do things, you can make like VPNs with it, you can mount file systems over SSH, you can tunnel through 10 VPNs, you can even forward your bloody desktop environment over it. I don't know why you'd ever do this, but dash X enables X11 forwarding, which means that I can run Firefox on a server and have the window pop up on my screen. It's like magic when you first do it, it's quite slow, but it's cool that it can be done. Uh, also mounting file systems is cool and transferring files over SFTP is very cool. SSH, best command in Linux. Uh, I've got rsync on the list as well. Uh, that's just because file transfers are cool. Uh, you see I have a bit of a thing for file systems here. Uh, a bit weird, but anyway. That's the video, boys.